The end is nigh. That's a cheerful little message I want to share with you as part of this video blog uh, I've been doing on a weekly basis. And I don't know how long we'll continue it, um, but uh, hopefully it gives you something to chew on and mull over during these days of confinement and this strange time of, of crisis um, globally. I want to speak to you from a passage in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, and verses 1 and following. It occurs in the context of Easter week. So uh, we're moving into Easter week, but Palm Sunday, um, this Sunday. Um, but uh, these, this event takes place um, in the, the gap between that and Monday Thursday. We often skate over these passages um, because we're rushing on to the, uh, the kind of flagship events of Easter week. But it's, it's, it's useful stuff. And this is what uh, Jesus says. He says, as Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. You know, that's like, wow, Jesus, look at this. Isn't this amazing? Look at the architecture. Herod the Great, nice job. This is wonder of the world sort of stuff. Well, Jesus um, takes the wind out of their sail. He says, uh, he asked them, you see all these, do you? Well, truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Now, that leaves the disciples something to think about. Um, a little later, it says, verse 3, When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will this be? And, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. I thought I'd share this passage because I don't know about you, but it feels a little bit apocalyptic at the moment, doesn't it? And um, interesting, I feel like my non-Christian friends are more apocalyptic than I am about it. Um, they seem very worried and anxious. And perhaps it's combined with all uh, other stuff that's going on uh, in the news, the coronavirus uh, epidemic, uh, pandemic, um, plagues of locusts in Africa, climate change crisis, sort of the, the unsettlement of the West and so on. Um, and people are a little bit fearful, anxious. Well, as Christians, we have this apocalyptic kind of undergirding resource in our spirituality it's part of our our dna and actually it helps us of dig down and, and and reclaim some of that as we tackle these events and think about what is our appropriate response and posture to them now we have to be careful about apocalyptic um literature and the schemas that come from it um and the timelines that people so eagerly seize upon um every generation has made the mistake of perhaps saying so and so is the antichrist and such and such is the beast and the Jesus is coming on uh, this date and uh, and, and so on. Um, we have to be a little bit um, wary of, of those things and not be led astray, to use Jesus' language. But um, because no one knows the day, not even the son, Jesus says a little bit later, only the father knows. Um, but nevertheless, as Jesus says in the, the, a little bit later, he says, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. So we live in this tension between Jesus saying, this is stuff is going to happen and happen in this generation. So be ready. But he also says, I don't know when it's going to happen. Only the father knows that. And so we live in this strange uh, now and not yet. It's coming. But when is it coming? Um, uh, kind of situation. Um, I heard this passage read. This is a cool story. This is a cool story. I've only been to Israel once and I went in 2008. It was April time. And um, uh, we went to the to the Mount of Olives and on the Mount of Olives in the Church of the Paternoster, one of our group read out these words that we've just we just heard. And the weird thing was, um, I you know, we didn't really remember it at the time, but they were doing a series of drills during those days in Israel, um, civil defense sort of stuff about how they would respond to a disaster, natural disaster or to an attack or so on. As soon as this guy started reading these words, air raid sirens went up across across Jerusalem and the, the area. You could hear it echoing across the landscape. And as soon as he finished, it stopped. And, do you know, it was a goosebumps moment. It was, I, I don't know if our guys had been planning this timing. I can't, I can't believe he was that good. But um, but it was it was a, a kind of a kind of hair standing up on the back of your neck moment because right in that that moment i felt like i was in an apocalyptic situation you know 
they were reading about wars and rumours of wars, and here the air raid sirens um, in Jerusalem were going off. And it made me realise that, that this apocalyptic stuff, which I'd always been quite sceptical about or wary about, was real for me, you know, that it, it did touch down into real history, because we have a God who touches down into history. And it, it reminded me that we should see life in apocalyptic terms, you know. Um, apocalyptic literally means that you tweak the curtain and you see behind the structure of things into the deepness of what God is doing. You see the sort of dynamics, the spiritual dynamics, the battles that go on. You see that God has a plan. His hand is at work in history. And uh, you realise that your life is, is significant and, and, and that you're in a life and death situation. Um, and, and in that context, even trying to get some bread from the supermarket becomes apocalyptic. Yeah, we, we, we're experiencing something of that here and now, aren't we? Well, um, Jesus says several things to us uh, and we can pull out of this passage and the extended passage. First, he says, don't be alarmed by it. You know, the world might be losing its head, but you don't be alarmed by it. As Christians, we have this sort of ability to be able to go, well, yeah, obviously, wars and rumours of wars, famines, earthquakes, you know, epidemics. What do you expect? You know, the end is coming. The end is nigh. You know, Jesus is coming at some point. So we're, we're not surprised by that. We're not phased by that. Um, so we're not to be alarmed. We're not to be led astray, Jesus says, not to lose our head and start going looking for other messiahs because uh, we've been told this is going to happen. So we keep our heads and our wits about us. Um, we do that in the context of hope, you know, because we remember that Jesus is the one who is coming again. And so we have nothing to fear. Yeah. Uh, and that hope is also something we need to share with those who don't have that hope, um, because a crisis is, is um, really is um, uh, of ultimate um, concern to them if they don't know Jesus, because what will the coming of Jesus mean for them? We don't know. So um, so they need to get right with Jesus. So our hope is also a hope we must share. That'd be perhaps the fourth thing. And then the fifth thing is this, that we are to be watchful. That's one of the key themes of this bulk of teaching, as we have a number of parables that pick up on that theme. Um, but Jesus tells us that we need to be alert and watchful as uh, in this context. And Jesus was doing that um, in the, on the Mount of Olives. You know, we see that in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is, says to his disciples, you know, watch and pray. Pray that you won't be um, dragged into temptation. And Jesus himself was praying not to be led uh, to give way to temptation. That's how important this is. And as, as Christians during this current time of crisis, we need to be prayerfully uh, watchful and guard ourselves in the power that God gives, the strength that God gives against the peculiar temptations that come during a time of crisis. That we won't lose our head, that we won't be alarmed, that we won't follow after false messiahs or false gods, but that we will be faithful, hopeful, watchful uh, witnesses to the truth. And so this Easter time and during these days of crisis, let's be alert. Let's be fresh in our uh, and vital in our faith and our faith sharing. Um, and let's allow this opportunity to wake us up to the reality of Jesus in the here and now and to the reality of the second coming of Jesus as well. That's something for you to think about and pray on this week.